Now, verse 11, And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands. What's going on here is mind-boggling, because here's John in this vision. His focus has been on he who sits on the throne with the Lamb, and the 24 elders, and the four beasts sitting in the immediate presence of God. And now, the angel draws John's attention to the broader audience, and John looks at, and he says, oh, we have 10,000 times 10,000. Well, if you do the math, it's pretty simple math because all you have to do, if you're going to multiply that, is just add that many more zeros, one, two, three, four, readjust your commas, and your number is 100 million. Well, if we take it literally, then we say John sees 100 million people and thousands of thousands. So we could probably increase that just however high you want to make it. The reality is, is the Greek word there, murios, times murios, is myriad times myriad. Would it be, wouldn't it be like an infinity? Times that's, infinity today? That's what it is. It's the biggest number you can think of. It always seems to get translated by the KJV translators as 10,000, because what is the biggest number you could possibly imagine in 1611 without the help of, of calculators, computers, and electronic devices? I think 10,000 is a pretty good interpretation of the word murios. But today, I think we can see the expansiveness of God's goodness and wonder and glory to say a hundred million people is not even a teeny start to what John is trying to paint for us. He's basically saying it's an innumerable host times innumerable and thousands and thousands. It's his way of saying, I can't possibly put a number on this. Now, why do we care about this? Why do we care to go into the Greek and, and do this kind of analysis with Scripture? For me, one of the answers to that question is, it gives me hope that God didn't set up a plan of salvation that would only work for and be successful with a small portion of the human population. I love this verse because to me, it increases my faith not only in God, but in humanity, in, in loved ones, in, in family members, in friends. Though they may be struggling through certain phases of life, kind of like chaos in the creation or chaos in the first six seals that we're going to cover next week, that God is not perplexed by this, that the Savior's infinite atonement is big enough and powerful enough for all those who are willing to acknowledge him whenever they're willing to acknowledge him. And keep in mind, God is playing the long game, not a short sprint with all of us. It gives me hope in how I can now interact with people and not condemn them and not judge them and not fear for their eternal uh, welfare. Many of you probably have loved ones maybe children or spouses or parents or siblings who have struggled with some serious issues, whatever the, the situation may be, verses like this should give us hope that the Lord is capable of working with all of us, both collectively and individually, that we don't need to, to preach anybody or condemn anybody into hell but we can have hope that the Lord is going to keep working with us to be part of this innumerable host one day.